Welcome back to another video and also to my new office, lab, layer, whatever it is people call them these days. Today we're going to take a look at how we might go from zero to PMPT without any prerequisite knowledge. Now this might take you six months which is just some arbitrary number I've plucked out of the air or it could take you years. So of course depending on your situation if you're living alone you have no commitments then it's going to go a lot quicker and if you're working full-time and looking after kids or maybe you're an avid gamer then it's probably going to take a little bit longer. So adjust your timescales and expectations to your situation and whatever the case may be I'm going to take you through the journey of what we need to get done and also the things that I think that set people up for success. As always, if you enjoy the video, then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. All right, let's figure out where to start. When we're setting a goal like clearing an exam within a time frame, we need to be smart and prioritize. It's easy for me to sit here and say, be consistent and eventually you'll get there, but generic advice, no matter how good it is, is not what we're talking about today. Now, obviously we need to work through and complete the courses associated with PMPT. I mean, there's no avoiding putting in the work, but let's look at what some of the key modules there are and the general topics that are really foundational and important to pen testing and therefore the PMPT exam itself. So here I am on the TCM website and of course we have this how to prepare for the PMPT exam and there are five courses here so we need to do all of them the practical ethical hacking PH, OSINT fundamentals, the Windows and Linux Privesc and of course the external pen test playbook. Now the most important one here is the PH. This is like the foundation of everything so what we're going to do is take a quick look at the curriculum and I'm going to highlight some of the key topics where you probably want to spend extra time or or things that you need to work on to make sure you really understand them. Otherwise, it's going to trip you up, not just in the exam, but also later on when you're doing penetration tests. So of course, we've got before we begin and the introduction and note keeping. I won't spend too much time on note keeping, but obviously note keeping is a really important skill. And then we come to networking refresher. Now, this is probably the first really critical module. If you don't understand networking and how computers and servers interact with each other and how networks are set up, up with subnets and VLANs and things like this, then you're going to have a bad time doing penetration testing because we're always going to be attacking networks when we're doing network penetration testing. So if you don't have a background in networking, then definitely spend some time here and make sure that you fully understand how networking works. Next, we've got setting up our lab. A really really critical step having our lab is going to really elevate our skills because we're going to be able to do stuff in a hands-on way the exam isn't a theory exam you actually have to do the work and do the pen test and so this is obviously critical next we've got some methodology which is important and then information gathering for me recon and info gathering especially in the network pen test context i think is fairly straightforward but if this is an area that you feel that you're weak in, definitely spend a bit of extra time here because this is an important step. If we don't do good recon, we won't find anything to. Then if we keep going down, we've got scanning and enumeration, which is a natural next step to our initial information gathering and reconnaissance, and then vulnerability scanning with Nessus. Now, if you're new to pen testing and you haven't done anything like hack the box before or try hack me, then the exploitation basics is also really critical. Make sure that you have a good understanding of all of these videos and demonstrations and make sure you do them yourself, follow through, type out the commands and do everything. Put your hands on the keyboard and actually do it. Watching it isn't gonna help. Even with things like some simple brute force attacks, you'll come up against a box later on where the brute force attack is slightly different or more complicated or takes a couple of steps to set up and you'll just hit a brick wall if you haven't actually sat and done it yourself, run into some issues and learned to troubleshoot those issues. Elevate your cybersecurity expertise with TCM security certifications. Our certifications offer in-depth practical training in penetration testing and ethical hacking. With real world exam scenarios and expert guidance, you're not just gaining a certificate, you're gaining a skill set that's in high demand. 
visit certifications.tcm-sec.com and take your first step towards a distinguished cybersecurity career. And then the capstones. So you have a choice here. For me, I tend to set a one hour timer. And if I don't make any meaningful progress and I'm completely out of ideas within an hour or so, then I will try and find a hint or take a peek at a walkthrough and just get that tiny bit of information that lets me progress. And then I'll go back to solving it. If you're feeling confident, then I think you should do it this way. You should definitely spend the time to try and crack the boxes. But if you're still trying to build up your methodology and you're not feeling too confident and you're hitting a lot of roadblocks, don't be afraid to have a look at the walkthrough or do something in a more guided way. Usually what I suggest is try a bunch of things, then look at the walkthrough. Don't just follow the walkthrough blindly. But once again, with each of these boxes, make sure you actually solve them, make sure you go through them. And once you've done them, put them aside, maybe come back to them a month later and see whether you can resolve it without the walkthrough or your notes. And this is a good exercise, it's gonna help you build your confidence and your methodology. Now, we have Active Directory, probably the most important section of the entire exam. And the great thing about this section is that we build our own Active Directory lab. You can go to any blog post and copy and paste commands to try and do Kerber roasting, for example, but building your lab, setting up the domain controller, setting up the group policies, adding the users, misconfiguring it, attacking it, fixing it, re-misconfiguring it, changing it, keeping it up to date. This is what is gonna build you real skills that are gonna pay dividends throughout your entire career. So don't skimp on two things. One, don't skimp on Active Directory. And two, don't skimp on building your own lab and exploring it. After this, we have some post compromise, which is really, really important because we're attacking a network usually. And so of course we need to understand how to loop machines and then how to pivot and make progress through the network. After a lot more Active Directory stuff, keep coming down and we've got web application enumeration visited and then finding and exploiting common web vulnerabilities. So basic understanding of web is needed for the PMPT exam because it makes you a better, more well-rounded penetration tester. You might be attacking internal out of date systems when you're on a pen test, but it doesn't go super, super deep like we do in our web exams. But this is a good foundation for you. Then we've got a little bit on wireless pen testing, legal documents and report writing, and of course, the career advice at the end. Now don't skimp on the report writing. A penetration tester is only as good as the report that they can produce. And so if this writing is a little bit of a weakness of yours, or if you're not very good at making documents clear and accessible, then spend a little bit of time here to improve that skill. Finally, mindset is everything. And there are a few things that I wanted to share with you that can help you tackle the exam. So first up, this is something that I do on all of my exams, and that is tell yourself it's a practice run. You get a free retake anyway, and so mentally just saying that this is a practice attempt and that I'm going to use it to test my methodology and my note taking and make sure that my materials that I prepared are in order is really, really powerful. And you'll actually learn a lot more by doing the exam twice anyway. If you scrape a pass, you'll probably learn a few things and tricks, but not really improve overall as a pen tester, but if you fail and then go back to study to improve and work on your weaknesses and improve your approach, then you'll be much more effective next time and overall be a better pen tester because you took the time to reflect and improve and work on your weaknesses and not just take the win. Next is to take your time and not just jump on everything that you see. Write down ideas as you go and come back to them. This will help you avoid rabbit holes and also help you cover your target in a more methodical way without missing things. And finally, treat the exam like a pen test, not a CTF. Be thorough like you would on a pen test, discover new targets, and like I said before, work methodically. Personally, I like to write my report as I go. If I find something, I take screenshots and keep like a rough draft report that I can come back to later on and clean up. But there are many different approaches here, so you'll have to figure out what works for you. Writing reports for a couple of the capstones is a good way to discover what you prefer and can help you get a methodology down before the exam time pressure kicks in. 
the exam is not the ideal time to be trying new things. So prepare as much as you can ahead of time. And that's it for today's video. I really hope this helps those of you who want to take on the PMPT challenge, take your first steps, or maybe break through any roadblock that you have encountered. The exam, of course, is designed to test you, but not to trick you and ultimately provide you with the experience of a real world pen test. Good luck and I'll catch you next time.